guys and welcome back to my world. Right, today I have multiplayer teleportation potions for you. So I'm being I'm joined here by my helpers Daniel K and um, you can't really see his name but this is Jamal Khan or just Jam as I call him. Right, so basically um, a video has been doing its rounds or a number of videos have been doing its rounds by a number of people who uh, showed how a potion can be used to actually teleport you uh, when you splash it down. Now, um, so what I'm, I've not built, I didn't actually cre uh, invent this or figured it out uh, as such. All I figured out is how to actually make it work for multiplayer. The big weakness was that it could not really be used in a multiplayer player environment because the effect uh, uh, at P command doesn't allow you to be specific on persons. And it, when it removes it, it rem it can't determine from which player it's been removed and then which player to teleport. Right, but the solution I found here works very, very nicely. So let me quickly show you the thanks to my helpers. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a potion. So I'm going to give him the potion uh, that will allow him to teleport. So Daniel is going to teleport to the blue spot when he splashes this potion. Uh, splashy splash. Okay. Woo! Okay, there you go. You saw that work. So you'll see that it took regeneration from uh, Daniel and it then teleported him to, to this coordinates. But you'll notice... I was not teleported and neither was um, Mr. Jam over there. Right, so the next one, I'm just going to give him all, uh, Jam also a potion, uh, the same potion, just so you can see that it still uh, still works. Let me just give myself a potion. Um, and, all right, Q. Okay. Do it. Right, so you'll see when he splashes it, he teleports as well. And... Uh, Daniel did not. So let me just really get them back to where they were. It's cool. So, but now it doesn't only need to be teleportation. It can be really be any kind of command that can be run with the command block. For example, I've also set up like a type, kind of a set home point. So if I give him this potion, okay, when he splashes it, nothing's really going to happen that you can see, but you will see that it'll actually set his spawn point to that point. Okay, so let's go. Splash. Okay, so he splashes it, and you'll see immediately that it took the slowness away from him, and it set his spawn point. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit him, and you'll see when he dies, okay, whee, there he goes. Okay, he's going to respawn on that spot. Ta-da! Here we go. See? How absolutely cool is that? So I can do the same for uh, Daniel. So let's just quickly really bring Daniel over here. Okay. And then he died. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, and I'm just going to give him... So, yeah. So if he now... If, if, oh, if Jam now sets his spawn point again, you will see that um, it will now put it, it to blue. Just to show you that I didn't cheat in any kind of way at all okay there we go so when he dies okay you will see he will now reappear like magic Ta -da! basically if you remove an effect from a player right a potion effect from a player it will actually activate a, uh, a comparator so you'll see here I've got effect at player one which is um, the is the speed uh, zero seconds and strength zero. So this actually removes any speed potions from me. So if I splash myself with any potion, you'll see nothing happens. Okay, nothing happens at all. But the moment I splash myself with a speed potion, okay, I instantaneously get teleported back to the spawn point. Right, so this is because this comparator uh, this if command block removes removes the effect from me, causing the comparator to go on, causing the command block to issue a teleport um, command. Now, the issue with a uh, the effect command is that you cannot be player specific. So you can say yes, remove uh, effect from a player, from all players, from a random player, but you cannot say remove this effect from Dragnos. But if you're on a multiplayer map, um, I might not be playing, so you can't use player names at all. Okay, so 
what I've come up with is actually um, tagging every single player in a map with a unique identifi identifier number. So you can see on the side here, I've got player one. So what basically happens is um, I've got a command block set up. So sorry. So first thing, first things first is I got uh, I created an, ob an objective called player. So it's scoreboard objectives add player dummy player. So I added an objective, and I then just set the display to the sidebar. Oopsie! <laughs> I accidentally hit uh, the spawn potion. Um, okay, so I set it to the sidebar, so you can see the player on the side. Right. So what happens is when a new player joins a map or a server. Okay, uh, I have a command block then then just says set any new player because the player score is zero to player one. So the first person that logs on will be player one. Okay, then I have a long line of redstone running that is obviously hooked up to a, uh, a clock over here. So um, once I'm player one, I then have a row of command blocks that tests the various players. So command block one tests how many player ones there are. This one tests how many players twos, players three, players four, players five, players six, players seven, player eight. Now I only have eight players on here, but you can have a near infinite amount of players. Okay, it's just you need one of these, uh, one of these for each player. Okay, so you'll see this one is lit because the command here is test for at all very very important at all score underscore player uh, underscore minimum one score underscore player equals one so this just specifies if I am one and only one okay turn on this comparator now uh, if you watched my video my last couple of videos um, if more than one player okay is number one it will then ac actually put out a signal strength of two or three or four or five so the moment a new player joins, um, they will automatically be added to number one. So we now have two number one players. Both these lines uh, then turn on and it'll activate the following command block. Now what this command block does says that pick the closest person to this uh, command block that has a score of one and change them to player two. So it'll then basically join number one detect that there's two players and then bump them up to number two. If another player joins, it'll do flag number one, it'll bump them to number two, there'll be two players in number two and it'll bump them to number three and it'll just carry on bumping, 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 bumping until all eight players are full. Okay, when you hit the, when you hit the eighth player, it just returns them back and makes them number one just so that the cycle's through. Because a big issue that tend to happen is that if uh, you've got a full full player list, a roster, and a number, for example, number six drops off, the next player that joins, um, there's no kind of real empty slots. But it'll just cycle through until it finds an empty spot and adds that person to that spot. And then that's it. Then that's their player number. So then all we need to do is to change the actual uh, mechanics of of this effect is to add the unique player number. So we now have another row of, of, of um, command blocks that just tests if I am removing or if a effect is being removed. So it just constantly removes an effect. So this one removes the effect from player one. Um, and I think this is, um, what is this? This is uh, regeneration. So it removes regeneration, so this is 10. If it does remove generation from player one, it then flags the following command block that says, now teleport player one to that coordinates. Okay. Uh, another feature is that you can actually turn the potions on and off. So let's do say I do want reg regeneration. I can actually turn off this whole effect. So to do that, I actually created a new variable or objective called potions. Now, if potions is set to, for all players, is set to zero, it means the potions is off. So you'll see over here, I've got a uh, player score, so is minimum one, and I've got potions score needs to be one. Right, and then it means it turn, it's turned on. So all I need to do to turn it on is hit this button, it'll flip, and you'll see now, it says uh, set score for players to one, it took the slowness from me, and it now set my, set my spawn point to <laughs> to where I just was. Now, what happens if I if I actually want to? Everybody on the server is using these teleportation uh, potions and so forth, but I don't want to. Very very easy. You can turn it off by changing your potion 
uh, score to, for example, 3. So you'll see this has now changed my potion score to 3. So these potions will no longer affect me at all, okay? Until I actually uh, set myself back to 0. So I've set myself back to 0, and you'll see I've now set my spawn point here, and if I now splash a potion, I'll get teleported. Okay. This is, I, I, yeah, this is really as, as simple as it is. This, um, I'm going to upload this world as well now. Okay, so you'll be able to download this world. This whole player number system will now become part of the blank, uh, blank world that you can download. So download this world. It contains everything you need to uh, set the world spawn point. It's got some basic world controls like mob griefing off, uh, keep inventory and so forth. And I have now added a, uh, a player unique player number list. Okay, so yes, please download it and uh, use it for all of your future builds. Cool guys, thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, if you like this, please rate, comment, subscribe, share it. You know, it's always, always appre appreciated. Cool. And as always, I will check you all later.